joining us. Thanks for your time. I know it's a busy schedule uh, at the moment for you. And uh, we are going to focus on the SDGs uh, at the moment. And I think it's fair to say that scientists are giving some pretty stark warnings uh, at the moment about what is the urgent need to rapidly reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But equally with that, the equation comes the number of people and their purchasing power is growing all the time. So how do you balance this equation? Um, with that in mind, it obviously puts businesses in a very tough situation, difficult position, uh, faced with the urgent need to address the emissions issue, but at the same time, increasing output. So how do you square this circle? Are businesses, in your opinion, in your mind, reinventing the way they do things? But or more pertinently, are they doing that fast enough? First of all, thank you for having me, Tom. It's a pleasure. Uh, a good question. Uh, not fast enough. Not. And, uh, uh, but some companies are doing a great job. Uh, one of them is, is Siemens, and I can, I, can, I can elaborate a little bit uh, later on that. But Tom, the, any company or organization that does not have a clear path towards net zero, uh, they're in jeopardy. They're at risk of not being in business. So it's the philosophy or, of adapt or fail. Mm. Um, what we're doing as an example, we as Siemens, as a participant in this, in this race, if you may, uh, we were doubling down on our, the, the innovative, the speed of our innovative technologies and, and all in the effort of making sure that our customers have safe, comfortable and uh, uh, green environment or sustainable environment. Mm. Sustainability, net zero and digitalization, they go hand in hand. So when you want to reach to that point, you take measures, you implement technology. Technology that can make you more efficient in your production, in your buildings. So in essence, the outcome of that is a sustainable environment or a sustainable operation. Mm. So I would like to see more uh, innovative technologies, more companies getting, you know, developing faster technologies, but it's, it's going in the, right, in the right direction. Let's put it that way. Like that, a hint of optimism there. Yes, indeed, good. indeed. I have to be optimistic, yes. <laughs> well, I'm going to challenge that optimism now if yes. I can, because uh, as you've said there, you know, technologies are going to play uh, a big role for business in reinvention and business reinvention mm -hmm. in its own right as well. To that optimism that we've just touched on there, um, are you optimistic that the new technologies that we have to hand are coming to market fast enough at the moment. To add to that, I wonder whether you can proffer a couple of examples from your professional experience of technologies that are available to us now, which could be rolled out potentially a little more rapidly. And what needs to happen to, um, to accelerate that rollout for market? Yeah. yeah. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, our organization, Siemens, is doubling down on, on speeding up the innovative, the, the, the research development and coming up with innovative technologies to enable so. Um, are there any, any, any technologies that could have been rolled out? Let me give you a, an example. Mm. There are, but there are fragmented technologies out there that, are, that, they, that they're siloed in their impact. Um, what we have done at Expo 2020, as an example, you know, Expo is the twice the size of Monaco. Mm. We were able to actually bring a whole bunch of technologies, including Siemens, integrate them together to offset a challenge that mm. they have with regards to water management, environmental management, energy management, et cetera, et cetera. What we were able to do with them is co-create. So not a lot of those technologies were available on our shelves. Mm. So we sat down with our customer and we said, what are your KPIs? What are the challenges? What do you want to do? So together we co-created technologies that can be available uh, and be scaled up. Was that available before? No. This is what we're able to do and this is what we, want, we intend to roll out. Now on the other side, uh, the pandemic, COVID, had accelerated a lot of the digital uh, technologies that are out there for multiple reasons. One is people did not have access to their facilities, to their factories. So they had to remotely monitor and operate. And how do you do that? 
digital technologies. Mm. Um, businesses have taken a, a bit of a hit from an economical perspective. So how can they reduce their overhead? By reducing their energy uh, intake and energy management uh, process and approaches, et cetera. What does that require? Digital technologies. So you put the two together, I think it, come up, it comes up with a good recipe as to what technology is there, what do we need to do in the future, and uh, some of the examples. Mm -hmm. Like Again, like I said, the, the, the expo, it's, it's the blueprint of what a smart city is with integrated uh, approach. In there, there is uh, over 130 buildings that we tied all the technologies, the building management, the water consumption, mm. uh, security, uh, irrigation, uh, listening to the, uh, to, to, to the forecast and, 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 and uh, preempt any, 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 any environmental. And with that, it all comes up to a cloud-based software that people can see and take uh, better decisions. Mm. That's part of the technology where you integrate a lot of things so the end user can benefit from that in their pathway to greener, safer, and, and more sustainable uh, environments. I mean, technology is, is, is one thing, but technology is nothing without leadership, and the two need to go hand in hand. And, and to that end, let's focus, if I may, on business leadership, um, which is key to successful transformation, the transformation that you've been uh, talking of there. Again, um, given a carte blanche, a free range, what would you like to see business leaders across the field doing more of now to enforce that change and transformation? Uh, good question, Tom. Uh, it starts with commitment. Mm -hmm. Do you have the vision and the mindset to, to, as a leader to carve out a path towards net zero or sustainability and so on? Once you have that, then you can create the process to get to it. So leaders uh, uh, are prioritizing right now. Mm. Uh, this is what we do uh, as, 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 as an organization as well. So we do it from the inside out. Uh, we have mandates, we have uh, policies, we have rules uh, on how to be sustainable, how to operate in a sustainable environment. Uh, we practice what we preach. We actually apply technologies within our own facilities and our factories to enable us to get to net zero. By the way, Siemens has a net zero target by 2030. So from as simple as uh, uh, putting bins to recycle to uh, efficient factories with, with, uh, with zero emission, uh, the entire, the, through the entire range, we have mandates and this is all leadership. We are committed to doing so. The nice thing is I see other companies making the same commitment. Now priorities could, be, could, could shift, could be different, you know, timing could be different, but uh, it takes a commitment at the end of the day for leaders to say, I want to carve out the path and I want to conclude with a certain outcome, tangible outcome in the effort of either net zero or, or uh, greening the environment. Mm. But this is on the industry side. There's also on the finance side, Tom. You know, this requires physical transformation, this journey. Mm. It costs money. And therefore, financial institutions need to have a green, you know, need to participate in greening the economy. They need to have a commitment as to how to finance some of these, uh, these transformational uh, processes. Mm. They need to make them investable. So therefore, on the industrial side, on the commercial side, also on the, like I said, on the, on the financial side, they need to be part of the game, finance some of these aspects, the transformation, the physical transformation, and, and, and be part of the journey. Look, everyone watching this will be no stranger to the fact that Siemens has, um, I hope you forgive me for saying, a, a, a long history of industrial, but also systems innovation, goes without saying. But again, and I know you've given examples already of what you as a company have been doing, <clears throat> but what would you highlight, again, as one or two or a couple of examples of Siemens' most successful contributions to responsible production over, say, I don't know, the last 10 years or so. Maybe you could give us a couple of those. Okay. Uh, Siemens, as, as you probably know it, uh, Tom, it's been in the business for the past 173 yeah. years. And Siemens is known for being an, an industrial giant company, et cetera. Mm -hmm. We've actually transformed ourselves and reinvented ourselves to be more a high technology type company. Mm. In fact, we are listed as the top 10 software companies in the world. So who would have ever thought 
a company that generate power or have uh, you know uh, appliances to become a software one of the top 10 software mm. companies in the world so we have applied our technologies in many different ways and reinvented ourselves to accommodate such examples i mentioned to you the expo yeah the expo the co-creation is really what makes siemens what actually defines siemens right now uh, a lot of what we have actually applied expo into expo is not siemens we sat down and we co-created and we brought in an ecosystem and uh, actually uh, we did all of that in the midst of covid in the last one and a half years mm. so we've accelerated that to enable us to actually come up with a good impact on hosting two million people in six months with all the challenges of a big city now this is what expo is going to face in a safe sustainable friendly and comfortable environment mm. Another example, hmm. um, a big uh, university in, in, in the US, uh, Southern Methodist University. Yeah. It's one of the oldest universities uh, in the US. It spans over a hundred buildings, older buildings. And uh, they wanted to take action towards sustainable future and towards uh, net zero and so on. So uh, we are applying digital technology in over 100 year old facilities or some buildings to enable them to actually monitor the entire campus through MindSphere city application, uh, IoT applications, uh, take smarter decisions on the classes, the buildings, the facilities, and in, in, in essence, what have they created? A comfortable environment, a safe environment, and a sustainable environment. Mm. So pretend that's a factory of people, that's what we've done. On the industrial side, automating factories, uh, again, with our MindSphere platform, looking at how we can make production lines efficient. How can we make their buildings more efficient? At the end of the day, what is our strategy is to reduce waste. We would only want to consume what we need, no more, no less. Therefore, let's produce what we need, or the utilities or the companies produce what we need, no more, no less. This way, we are protecting the environment. Mm. Um, finally, if I may, one more uh, from us. Um, you know, I started by talking about the fact that we're going to talk about uh, uh, sustainable development goals. But SDG 12 is one yeah. that is close to your heart, uh, responsible consumption and production. So for a company that wants to implement SDG yeah. 12 within its own production as well, where would you recommend that it starts and how does how does a company out there go out to embed sustainable transformation in its very DNA? What advice could you proffer there? Yeah. You know, that's, that's interesting. Um, so uh, let me start with what I have done in my home yeah. to implement an STG 12 type uh, approach where I want to be conservative with what we produce, what we consume and manage that well, right? And take that into the larger scale of things. So in our home, uh, we have recycling bins. Mm. We started with that, so I created a culture, a mindset for my children and my family and my wife to say, this is what we want to do, recycle here versus all going into one bin. And then we looked at our thermostat, and I bought a programmable thermostat. Then I said, no, there is more than that. So we have now a, 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 a thermostat that's wireless that I can access from this. Then I went to home automation. So what I have done in my own facility is I made it safe, comfortable, and obviously sustainable. Mm. Very, very energy efficient. And I'm looking for other things that I can implement uh, technologies in my house, whether it's solar roofs, et cetera, to help us consume less, and obviously it costs less. And at the end of the day, the, the, uh, the end result is, is a greener technology, mm. a greener uh, environment. With regards to outside, what we have been doing is exactly the same. It's, uh, Tom, it's a mindset. It's a, it's, a, it's a commitment, first of all, you prioritize, you set the mindset, and you make the commitment to go there. So you start from, uh, we have, and, and, and our commitment to that is we have uh, people, colleagues that are accountable for this, to yeah. see this happening in the workplace, and then onto the, the, the manufacturing floors. So it's a journey, and you have to start it somewhere, and you measure it and verify it as how, how successful we are, where are we with that, what else can we do? You implement technologies, you imp implement uh, uh, enablers to help you make better decisions. 
So uh, as an example, the IoT devices that you have, like in my house, when I go to my nest, it gives me graphs of how much I consumed and where I wasted energy and where I can do better. That was not available before. Mm. So you have to commit to implementing some technology. Yes, it's much you know, more expensive than a <laughs> typical thermostat, but it enables me to have a better, more sustainable or more efficient operation. Mm. Similarly in industry. So uh, uh, I, I am hoping that uh, you know, we are in, on the right path and I know we are on the right path, but I'm hoping that we can probably accelerate it and or beat our targets, uh, but it's a cultural mindset for us. Yeah. And may more and more people adopt that uh, mindset. Uh, thanks for leading by example, uh, both as an individual and a company as well. Thanks for your time. And uh, I suppose last thing for me is enjoy Expo 2020 Dubai. A lot of investment, a lot of <coughs> emotional uh, attachment as well. So enjoy it. Well, thank you so much, Tom. It's been, it's, in, it's been a few years in the making. And we talk about vision. You know, Expo would not have happened unless it was a, a visionary leaders here in this country that want this to make to make this happen. Yeah. The sustainable and safe and comfortable environment at Expo would not have happened except uh, when the leaders decided, you know, let's invest in technology partners like us and the other premier sponsors to make this journey and to make this experience a lovely, sustainable experience. It's a city at the end of the day. We are really excited mm. to see, you know, to see us to see it come to a not an end to a beginning, yeah. but an end of, of a lot of work in the past few years. So yeah. I'm looking forward to it and hopefully we'll see you there. Well, I, I'm sure I'll see you on site over the next six months. That's for sure. Looking forward to it. Thank, Thank you, you so Tom. much. Thank you.